Hey parents, Heather and Alex here, and welcome to the parent prep video for the second installment in our Experiencing Christmas Through John um, video series. So this week, you or this week, this video, you are focusing on verses 6 through 13 in the first chapter of John. So um, Alex, you want to start with the first discussion question? Sure, yeah. So we, the first question was, is who was John the Baptist? Um, now, and we mentioned it in the children's video, like John the Baptist was this wild man. I mean, he, he, he was a preacher. He baptized people. He wore camel skins. He went out in the wild. He ate locusts and wild honey. And that is absolutely insane for, you know, for us. Um, but, but there's a lot more though that, that we can learn about John the Baptist and that you guys can also teach your, your children, um, yourselves about John the Baptist. Um, and so now one, now a principle that, that I want to talk about real quick that, that might help you and you guys can talk about with this, with the, about this with your children, um, or, you know, and think of on it yourselves is this idea of 2020 vision, whenever you are reading this, the Bible. Um, and this, this helps us to, to avoid like taking, you know, single verses or passages out of context. And so what 20, the 2020 rule, I know the 2020 is an awful year. Uh, but um, it for reading the Bible is to read 20 verses before a passage, okay, and then 20 verses after a passage. And this helps us locate that that specific verse, that specific um, passage, better in context. So that way we can we can better understand what what the gospel writer was was trying to communicate to us. Um, and so, it, and this is really important in John because because we find. Um, that John, he, he mentions John the Baptist early on um, in, uh, you know, in verse 6. Um, but if, if you don't read John chapter 19 through 34, like you, you miss out a whole lot um, in kind of background information and more, more information about John. Um, and, so, and so looking, like reading further down through this is really, really important. It's, it's a really good tool to help you. Um, help you guys read the Bible for yourselves and then also to help your children um, learn to read the Bible and interpret it in, in its context um, and we and some other places that you guys can kind of read to learn more about John the Baptist is Isaiah chapter 40 um, this is a prophecy that um, that John the Baptist fulfilled um, all the way back in Isaiah uh, and we mentioned that in the children's video um, also Mark chapter 1 1 through 11 this is this is the introduction of Mark, and you see John the Baptist on the scene, like, immediately in that. Um, and then also Luke chapter 1. Um, those are all chapters, and Luke, Luke chapter 1 is really important, too, because that's talking about the birth of John the Baptist. And we, and we, we get and we, we see all these different portraits of, of John the Baptist, of Jesus, and, and we kind of, we, whenever we actually read all of these different passages, that we can start to get more of a holistic understanding of um, of like these characters. Yeah, and that's something that's really great about, especially when you're comparing the Gospels, is you kind of have a different little bit of piece of information from each one yeah. um, that kind of helps you put together this whole picture. So take the time um, that you have and kind of get that whole image of that because John the Baptist knew yeah. like that was going to be his purpose from the beginning. Yeah. And so, um, and that's something that's really important to teach our kids is that God has great purposes for our lives. And la last video, we talked about how their lives have great value yeah. um, and worth, but they also have great things to accomplish. Things that God set out before the beginning of the world for them to do yeah. and, and to champion and challenge them in those things. Yeah. And that's much, much better than I could have said it. Um, and so, so our second, our second um, kind of discussion question um, is, why do you think the world didn't recognize Jesus? Um, and this, and this, as as a you know Christians, you know Southern Baptist kind of Christians living in the middle of the Bible Belt, like if if we went into any life group in in this building, you know, on a Sunday morning, and we asked this question of, you know, would you do you think that you would have recognized Jesus, like? A lot of people would respond yes, but but the probably the real fact of the matter is is that most of us, if if we were all living in the first century A.D., um, you know when Jesus you know came on the scene, like we 
we probably, if we were all Pharisees and Sadducees and all, like we would not have recognized Jesus. Um, we would not have, a lot of us, we probably would not have believed um, that, that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Um, uh, we, yeah, we, we have like back, back then in, in the first century, like the Jewish people, they were, they were waiting for this Messiah to, to come and rescue them from the Roman empire to, to deliver them. Um, they were expecting a whole bunch of different things about the Messiah. Um, and Jesus completely broke all of their expectations. Um, completely. He did not fit the cookie cutter kind of mold. Um, and that's something that that's really important. So even like if your kids say that, you know, that they think that they would have recognized Jesus, um, like it's, it's okay. Like, you know, we're, we're not expecting them to, you know, to fully understand the entire historical context, but, um, yeah. But but for your younger ones, their answer will probably be yes. And that that's a really great, I mean, you know, it's okay for the young ones. As you have yeah. older kids, challenge them in that. Really yeah. talk about, like, why do you think that so many people missed what was happening? And I think that the oppression that they were under facing yeah. the Roman government is a huge. But also their expectation of what yeah. they were we're expecting God to do that wasn't that. And that, that kind of leaves the door open for you to have some really great discussion questions about, you know, there are times when we expect God to do one thing and he doesn't yeah. do that. And how do we handle that disappointment? And how does God still, still remain as a, a solid foundation for us? Even when yeah. things don't, you know, whenever we yeah. ask God for things that don't happen, um, how, how do we navigate that? And so that really can be a way for you and your family to go really deeper in this discussion um, as you're kind of going through this, kind of as a springboard for another conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this, this can all, uh, you know, we, we mentioned it kind of in, in the last part, um, the, their memory verse, it was John, uh, you know, 1, uh, 12. Um, and, and this is a, this part is an excellent kind of springboard for for you to to be able to really start to share the gospel with your kids to to uh, to minister to them um, in ways that that me and Heather like you know we see them or I mean we, we used to see them every week or twice a week but um, but you guys can minister to them in ways much more powerfully than we can. Um, and I think, yeah, so Heather, would, would you like to kind of talk more about yeah, this part? Yeah, especially whenever we, we talk about this idea of becoming a child of God. This is an incredible moment for you to share the gospel with your kids and to really talk to them about what that means. Now, if your kids are, you know, four or five, simple, basic understanding is what they're going to have. As they're older, you're really going to have some opportunities to really talk about the difference that that makes and, yeah. and what that really means. Because one major thing that, that we want to make sure our kids understand before they're ready to make a salvation decision is what sin is and the real consequences of sin, but also that they have sinned. And that is a really a foundational truth for them to be able to understand before they can act, actually make a profession of faith. Now, our young, young, young kids, they're going to love Jesus, and we're going to want them to. That is a, a absolutely developmentally appropriate stage. But whenever you're wondering, is, is my kid ready to make this decision? That's a huge question that, that will help you as you're navigating this is can they understand what sin is and can they understand that they have sinned? Um, so you'll be able to have that conversation um, and to be able to talk about that once we make that decision to follow Jesus and to trust him with our lives, that's a one-time decision that we make. And then our, our salvation is secure in what, in what Jesus has done for us. Um, and so it's a very important decision um, if you have more specific questions about that, we would love to talk to you and help you with that. Um, that's one of the greatest things that I get to do is help you as you lead your child to Christ. Um, and so we would we would love to help answer any more of those questions that you have about that. Yeah, yeah. And I think just just using this as the opportunity to to share the gospel. I mean, especially maybe maybe if you guys haven't had 
a lot of these conversations before with your children or you you know or you're not like in a regular routine mm -hmm. um is that this this could just be such an excellent way to to start doing that yeah absolutely um, and and that you guys can can start to you know carry on even after this this little video series um so yeah so heather would would you like to pray as i would out? love to i would love to all right let's pray god we love you so much and God, this passage that we're studying is so rich in deep truths about who you are. And God, I pray for our parents as they spend time and they make time to open up your word with their children. God, I pray that you would bless that. God, that you would, um, God, that you would turn the hearts of our families towards each other and you would strengthen our families. That, that the kids would see their parents as their spiritual heroes. That, that you would provide opportunities for great discussions. And God, even ones that are really hard to have, um, God, that you would give us courage and boldness as we share your truth. God, we, um, we just love you so much. And God, the fact that despite all of the ways that we mess up, all of the ways that we fall short, that you've provided a way for us to be called your children. God, we, may we never take that for granted. And God, I pray that you would help us to understand the depths of what Jesus did for us more and more every single day. And God, that you would raise up in us a passion to share that hope with everyone that we know. God, thank you for proving your love to us in such a beautiful way. God, we love you so much for that. God, thank you for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen.